Hi there and welcome back. We're going to continue creating this game. In this part, we're going to use some more nodes to create some health for the meteor and a spaceship and also display score. So let's start with adding health for meteor. Currently, how we have it set up, when the laser collides with the meteor, it destroys it, an explosion gets spawned and then we destroy the laser. So one thing that we need to do also is make sure that our explosions get deleted after they're played. So let's do that with a script machine. And for this one, I'll just use an embedded script machine. And all we want is on start game object and destroy. And that way we're gonna clean up the game objects after we use. I'm gonna set it to two seconds. And for the object, we're gonna pass in this. So that should get that off our things to do. And now let's add health for Meteor. Let's go inside our Meteor graph and the nodes that I have in Spock that you can use for health. They start with health system and they have a hit node, heal, brain, and also event. The main one is the brain. So if we want our Meteor to have health, this is the node that we add here and we can specify how much health each meter is going to have. So let's say that it's going to have four. We're going to have maximum four and also we'll start with four. Now, one thing that will change is when the meteor dies, we'll spawn an explosion. And also while we're here, we can add score. So let's do add score and let's say each Meteor is going to give us five points. And for tracking score, we're just going to use points. And we'll just use current because we're not going to keep track of total score in this game. After we add score, we can do game object destroy and remove this object because the meteor is destroyed. Also, I want to add an effect of showing that that meteor is being hit and we can listen on hit event right here as well. So what I'm going to use is color animation. And the idea is to get this meteor tinted red each time it gets hit. To achieve that, I can set it to is delta and specify by how much color I want it to be shifting. So let's select a, a very dark a red color. And the reason why I'm selecting red dark color because it's going to be adding this color to the existing one. If we want to subtract, which is going to make that color darker, you want to do the opposite. So subtracting, you want to subtract opposite of red color. Either one should work. And for duration of the animation, I'm just going to set it to 0.1. So it's going to animate it really fast. That is it for setting up for the meteor. Now we need to change the logic on the laser side. Currently, I'm just destroying the object. And instead, what we want to do is use the health system hit and pass uh, that object that we collided with to the object that we're trying to hit. Damage, we'll leave it at one and then we can continue with the previous logic that we have. So this game destroyed, we can remove and replace it with the health system. So let's click play. And now you can see that I am hitting those meteors. They're being destroyed, but the colors are not being changed. So the reason for that is the meteor has an object inside which contains the mesh renderer and the material. The color animation is trying to animate colors on the meteor and we have no colors here. So what we want to do is actually pass the child as the input. So let's do get child and at index zero and pass that as the object that we want to change. So now you can see that each time we hit, the color gets shifted, so it gets redder each time. It's getting darker. And if we change this from subtract to add, let's change the value to be a dark red color. We should see that the color gets brighter each time we hit. Um, you can adjust by how much it's gonna change for the look there you're going for. 
we have the health on the meteor and we already did add the score counting for each meteor we destroy so let's actually display that and we're gonna go and add a UI element text using text mesh pro and how we're gonna set up is create an empty parent this can be score and on this score let's add a horizontal layout group so that we can have two texts here and for those two texts I don't want to expand it actually you want to use the child scale we want to center it and I want it on the top the width let's set it to 500 and now we can go to our text here so this is gonna say score I'm gonna align it to the side and this one is gonna actually display the number so something like that and now for the score number where we just playing we want to add a script machine to change that number I'm gonna use an embedded here and what we want to look for is UI score and here we can specify what score we want to display there so current points and that's pretty much it so now we can click play and we should start with zero points and each meteor that we shoot down it will increment so we got the score we got the meteor now let's add health for our spaceship as well so let's select our player and add health here so health system brain is what we want and let's give three health for our spaceship so three times it can be hit before it gets destroyed and currently what we're doing whenever we collide with an enemy the enemy gets destroyed and explosion gets spawned so what we want to do is explosion is going to get spawned whenever we get hit and and here on enter we can do health system hit and let's cause damage to the meteor so let's do like 10 so to make sure that the meteor gets destroyed and also we want to do damage to our spaceship as well so let's just duplicate it and we'll use health system hit without connecting any objects and that should cause the hit to the current health system now all we have left is what we want to do after the player is dead so let's just for now destroy the game object so game object and destroy and pass this so let's test it out so one two three and our player gets destroyed also if you're using this add score to count your score it also saves the best score as well so we can create a game over screen now create an empty game over and we'll add text here so let's make sure the game over screen they're taking the whole screen space and game over let's increase the width to 600 center it height to let's do 100 and we can also increase the size of our text here uh, what we can do is duplicate our score and let's position it a little bit lower and this is going to be best score instead so we can copy the same thing that we had there except now we can just say that this is best score and the place where we were displaying the UI instead of using current we can select best and that's going to display the best score for us now let's add the ability to display the screen when we lose the game the current easiest way to do it with Spock is by using show hide UI so in here what we can do is use the show hide UI and we can pass the name of the UI that we want to hide or show and in this case it's game over 
So we can use that name that we have for the game object, game over, and pass it in, in here. So now to display that game over, we want to, before we destroy this game object, connect it to show, and then after shown, we'll destroy the object. Now for this node to find game over, we need to specify where we want to look for these UI names. Going to canvas here, what we can do is add a script machine and let's just do an embedded script machine here. And there is a node called config UI. And all this is going to do is go through all the childs of this game object and make the names of the game objects available to be triggered with the show and hide UI node. So by default, we want the game over screen to be off. But before we do that, let's also add on click event to restart the game. So let's do script machine embedded. And in here, what we want to do is listen for the on click. And it's just on pointer click if we want to have the mouse click. And we can do more than one. So on keyboard input as well. And we can listen for the space to restart the game as well. To restart, there is a node that we can use, restart scene. And that's just going to restart the current scene for us. Now that we configured the restart option, we can disable this game over screen, save it, and click run and we can test it out. So let's go destroy our spaceship. And there we go, we can see our current score, our best score, and a game over screen. If we click, that's gonna restart our game. And now we can try to beat that score. So that will be it for this part. In the next part, I'll have some more interesting things that I want to add here. But if you have any suggestions of what to add, uh, be sure to write that in the comments. Now, I'm just focusing on the logic portion of the game. So that's why I'm not really spending that much time on the visual part of it, because that's the part that will make the game that you create unique based on what you see the game should look like. And I'm leaving that to your guys' interpretation of how you want it to look like and all of that stuff. And my goal is to show how to create the logic using the nodes and subgraphs that I've created for the Spock package and just giving you ideas of what could be achieved with the nodes that already exist. So be sure to click on the like button and I'll see you in the next one.